Hello there, and welcome back to Congo. So, last time, didn't really much... No, nothing much really happened. We did a little bit of build-up, but as I said, other than that, we didn't really do much. We uh, more or less have created the armies that we need. Uh, we are building a navy. A pretty strong navy, I dare say. And we're going to use this for, well, our own goals and purposes, more or less. It shouldn't actually be too much of a problem when you think about it. And today, I think we're going to uh, keep on messing with Funge, or... We're going to start messing with Funge, we haven't actually messed with them. I don't think we ever fought them. Soon due to the fact they uh, joined the coalition, which they have been in in most of the game, and I haven't actually been able to touch them. What we are going to do, however, is try and mess with uh, both Tripoli and also RGS. I want to vassalize them, but they're being stubborn bastards and uh, have a province too much or something like that. So I think we're actually just going to take Klemkin. And then we're going to declare war for vassalization afterwards. I think that should work out just fine. We're also going to keep uh, both Algiers and also Morocco as a vassal over a prolonged period of time. At least until we get these two provinces from uh, the Spaniards. Also, I managed to get myself an alliance with the Holy Roman Empire. So when I actually declare war in Spain, it will be a hilariously interesting affair. Especially since you can see Great Britain will join, but the Holy Roman Empire won't. So yeah, it's... It could go very, very bad too. I could actually try and declare on, uh, try and get a castle battle on Portugal instead. And the reason is, of course, very simple. By probably getting claim on this island, for instance, Madeira, and declaring on Portugal. If Spain joins, I'll probably not have to deal with, uh, deal with, uh, with the annoying status, uh, Russia. So, uh, we'll have to see. I'll probably. I'll probably declare war on Portugal as things are currently standing, so I think we might as well just fabricate a claim on Madeira and, uh, and get it done with to have the Casus Belli. But the plan is, once again, we'll fight Tripoli, we'll fight Funch, we'll fight Algiers, and then we'll uh, keep Spain and, and Great Britain as the big bad, well, big bad bastards for last, more or less. But uh, the war against, uh, against Great Britain will definitely be an interesting one, and it will be a tough one because we need and <laughs> we need a proper navy. And we need to find a way to actually get that uh, Casus Belli, so I can actually get a ticking war score. And I think the way that we'll do that is probably by attacking Brunei, uh, someone in this area, potentially, as I said, in the war with Portugal, try and snatch one of these colonies, and use that as more or less a staging ground, and uh, potentially work from there. But Great Britain has five provinces that we need, five islands, more or less, that I probably should have secured earlier, but it's my... It's my bad, really. So, what we'll do now is wait for the truces to end, and then we'll go after Algiers and Tripoli. We'll see how it works out. I have also opted to take diplomatic tech and just realized, I said last episode, I would wait until the changing of the year in order to save some diplomatic points. I just realized that now, and I couldn't actually figure out why I didn't take it, so I messed up. I lost about 60 points here. My bad. But uh, we do get some increases with diplomatic tech 24. We get trade range by 20. We can... Uh, you build an archipelago frigate. Well, probably you build a single one of those, though. And we also get a trade efficiency increase by 10%, which should help, uh, well, monetary issues a little bit. Also, aiming at getting the uh, tree deck is at level uh, 25 and the morale. If we get that before Great Britain, we might actually consider... We probably won't. <laughs> if we get that before Great Britain, I would have considered to actually build up a navy fast and then they could have warned them. But uh, it don't, doesn't seem like that will be the case. So, uh, we'll wait until the run out. I believe they will do in... Uh, yeah, just over new, just over the new year. New year, wow, my bad. But uh, yeah, wait for the truth to run out, and then we'll decide what we'll do. I can pass the abolition of slavery act, and it's kind of an interesting thing here. You get less missionary strength, but you get a minus five percent technology cost, which is fair to me. And also, stability cost is cheaper for a little bit of tax. So all in all, this is a very good thing to take. You basically, well, you don't need much to take it either. So we'll go for it. Cheaper tech is always good. And it's also another reason for why I should have uh, waited. So, this is going to be a little bit annoying. These things pop up every month, depending on how many slavery uh, provinces you have. And it's, of course, an annoying little... Let's just leave it at annoying. That is probably... Yeah, as you can see, they'll just pop up until... Until uh, you basically press unknown on everyone. I would have liked to have a combined event. I have no idea why I... I probably can't actually make a combined event. But I definitely would have preferred that rather than great news, let my people go, let my people go. So basically going to do this until uh, all of the people have 
been let go and uh, then they'll produce something else. Of course, the fact that we're no longer trading slaves will probably... I have no idea what we actually got from slaves. I believe you get some extra production efficiency. So it's its a little bit bad that we, uh, that we lose that, but it should be fine. Football. New religion spreads. A peasant rabble is performing strange rituals in all some kind of balls. We have to prevent another religious turmoil. Um, I guess we'll go for this. <laughs> all on the province against football. 50 years. Spymaster Latsar. I, I don't care. I guess I can get rid of him rather than having one uh, one real risk for 50 years. Let's see, I can take the guy with better relations over time. Of course, it's a little bit bad that I don't have um, very good people here. But I guess I can upgrade these guys to level 2 people then. Now, maintenance. I'll keep that guy. Agricultural cultivation. I will not be taking this. Anything that makes my tech more expensive at uh, the cost of my... Uh, at the cost of my... Uh, my technology, it's not something that I like to take it. In the long run, it'll just screw you over, especially if you take a lot of them. On the the other way around, I can actually uh, actually like, so... But as you can see, we don't really have monetary issues, and... The biggest reason for that is the fact that we have an extreme gold production. We're earning just as much as gold, or from gold, as we do as taxes, so... That is mostly the reason why things are going as well as they are. And as you can see, I'm actually setting up another 20k army here, so uh, we definitely have what we need to make this uh, make this work. And I also, I believe, I believe I actually have a 20k mercenary army still standing as well. I'll probably, I'll probably uh, put it down, so to speak. No, that's a bad wording. I'll probably get rid of it, but uh, not right now. We'll declare war on Hejaz. I might actually go for the vassalization of them simply to make the map a little bit prettier. Omen also have some rich provinces that could potentially also help on the... Uh... The reason why I'm actually thinking of taking Hejaz is simple. The fact that they have... Uh, that they have sea provinces means that I can use them to increase my uh, my force limits at sea. Basically, I can have a bigger navy. And that is, of course, a very, very tempting offer, more or less. So that is why I am considering, as I said, to... Uh, to lose trade company. Wait a minute. Rio de Oro. <laughs> Is this something I will regret? Producing what? Um, I'm a little bit unsure what the trade company actually does. It's a building or whatever. I'll see if I can figure that out and then get back to you. Sorry, I should have known this, but a trade company is actually a manufactory, so I thought it was something else. I was thinking like the East India Company, a decision I've taken before, something like that, which could have major which could potentially have a major impact. It isn't, so I'm fine with that. And I've also finally got to building that glorious monument, which is uh, which is even better. But we're going to march into Adyasi and we're most likely going to, as I said, go for the vassalization on them. Uh, but I'm also tempted to just keep them alive for more or less this war, or not vassalize them during this war, but potentially the next, in order to be able to <clears throat> fight Tripoli over and over again, so I can actually vassalize them. That is at least what uh, what my plan is behind it, so I have no idea how it will work out either. We'll have to see. The Mamluks will uh, probably, uh, probably siege something for me too, so it's not really a problem, but this is this is just annoying. It's kind of a... Uh, I'm kind of tempted not to take this decision every time I'm reminded of this, but... The benefits are good, so who can actually complain? But yeah, I'll uh, finish this war, and then we'll see how it all plays out. Hmm. Peace has been made with Algiers here, and we're just going to take Constantine and reason simple. There's no reason to actually take anything else, and we're not going to be coring it, so we're also going to take it the next level of admin tech. Level uh, 20 here, absolute rulership. Can I use absolute monarchy or a republican dictatorship? I think it's also time that we change our rule here from, well, a despotic monarchy into a absolute one, because it gives the discipline bonus, and that'll be definitely be useful. Let's, let's just be perfectly honest about that. Having that discipline bonus combined it with what we are about to get will bring our discipline to about 130%, which uh, will make us a considerable force at land. And... I think we can afford to do that, and also taking, uh, as you can see there, I took some inflation, but I took 50 points for 
I took 50 admin points for 0 0.5 inflation, and I have to use 75 to get rid of two. So, all on, I earn points if, or you will earn points if you if you agree to those terms, over and over again. Of course, you have to be able to, uh, well, agree to sometimes sacrifice uh, administrative points since you will be getting diplomatic and military points as well. You simply have to consider it about, or consider depending on uh, on what you're actually doing yourself. I would like to actually get this promise too, since it's something I can sell to the Mamluks, but it seems like Funch has decided that, no, this is something we're going to take, so... Uh, I'm a little bit unsure if they can actually make a deal with Ripoli, so I'm going to wait just a little while to see if they can. They probably can't, but... Uh, and I'm just waiting and waiting here, that could, be a, that could really be a possibility, but... I'll wait and we'll see what happens. Also, we take an equality idea here, mass battery. I feel we've come with ability plus 10%. And with the completion of that three we'll also get a discipline bonus, which will be uh, very useful. I think we'll actually go ahead here and do a little bit of investment in the uh, diplomatic ideas or naval ideas. And the reason is simple. We don't really have... Uh, we don't really have too much else to invest in. I'm also tempted to go off the AEM and province here to uh, recreate it. I could potentially... Uh, yeah, I can actually... Re I can actually create Yemen here as a vassal and then feed them, uh, well, I think I can actually feed them the promises here too. Let's see here. It's occupied by Yemen, also next by Omen. Stop being, yeah, it actually has been a Yemen province. I don't think this one has. Yeah, it actually has. So I can actually recreate Yemen and then hand over with some uh, some provinces them, which is uh, kind of an interesting thing to do here. No idea if this actually ever was a. No, it was never a Yemen call. It was this, not this. Occupied by Night, an ex by the Mamluks actually. That's interesting. So yeah, potentially as you can see, I can. I can't go after a lot of land here since it has been Mamlukin, but I don't really see too much gain on it on fighting the Ottomans, especially since they're most likely trash me, but recreating Yemen and taking the uh, Peninsula here could be useful. It could, but we'll have to consider what we'll do for now. I'll just wait a little bit wait longer to see if Funj, uh, once they finish the siege here, I might actually just go down there and help them. Uh, once they finish the siege, if, uh, if they'll end the war or not. So for now, I'll just march down and help, and then we'll see what happens. So, we're going to change here from this body monarchy to an absolute one, and it will suffer. My legitimacy will suffer, but it, it should be alright. Uh, I think I will be able to deal with any potential rebels here. I don't think there'll be any rebels, as you can see. There aren't any. Well, there's some. But it's, it's, not, a, it's not something that I can't manage, so it shouldn't actually be a problem, uh, per se. I'm. Also a little bit unsure what I want to do here in terms of uh, next idea set. I will probably go offensive to boost my military even further. But it's also tempting to take diplomatic here to get the uh, diplomatic relations plus two. Since I do need the diplomatic power that I'm getting for, first of all, uh, potentially Yemen or whatever else I want. But what I think we will be doing here is simply annexing the Mamluks as soon as the war here for the war with, uh, with Tripoli is over. We'll have to see. We will probably just. Uh, I'll probably just annex them. I have no idea. Funch cannot be actually vassalized, but. It doesn't really matter. I think we'll just take these two provinces and then. Uh, and then make peace here. With Tripoli and then just go for. Uh, annexation of the Mamluks and then vassalizing. Adjust, but also uh, Yemen later on. We'll see. For now, we'll, yeah, we'll. We'll do that. It's one province. It shouldn't be too expensive to court myself. No, I don't want. I don't want. To, I don't want you to hand it over to me. And let's see. Do I want them to hand it over? No, probably not. I want to give up the deals with the Ottomans, though. And I could probably just have them give up some cores. No, actually, I, it's expensive to have them give up cores, so we're not going to do that. Instead, I think we're going to take this. Once again, it's it's expensive from a diplomatic point of view, but or diplomatic points point of view. But it should be perfectly, it should be perfectly all right. So these are two problems that we will take. We'll sell this one to the Mamluks, and once we've done that, we'll actually just next them, um, release Yemen, fight a uh, fight Omen, a little bit of extra land, and with that, I'm pretty sure everyone will be happy. I will. Don't want to vassalize these guys. I don't think I want to do it just yet, as I said. 
Um, I do need the diplomatic points, so for now I think we just take the money they have and uh, and leave them be. I think that's actually the bit. <laughs> I think actually that's the best plan. It might not sound like the best plan, but to be perfectly honest, from my point of view, it is. So we're going to sell them, sell them this province, and then we're going for, as I said, just a straight out annexation, and that should be fine. We will also, as I said, vassalize Algiers, and we'll keep them as vassal. Taking the diplomatic idea tree could potentially be a very good thing to do. Or we'll probably just actually vassalize Algiers and then declare one Spain. So I think I'll be using one of the diplomats I'm currently getting back here to fabricate a claim on the Spanish lands. Or uh, one of the Spanish uh, colonies here. And we're basically going to use this as our. Well, as a staging ground rather than something. Rather than a Casus Bellline which can make us lose. Of course, the claim once Spain is once again not a. It's a dangerous adventure, especially with Russia. I've no idea how big Russia's fleet is, though, and that is kind of what is the scary part. So let's take a quick look at that before we end this one. Russia, nothing to be afraid of, really. They their fleet is too far away, anyways. They try to send something. Well, they actually have something here, so they could, they could definitely be scary, but. To be perfectly honest, if they actually try to send something over here, they'll most likely just die on its way there. So I think we are, I think we are fairly all right in uh, in that in that regard. So I think we're going to wait until the truces with RGS go out. Then we're going to uh, warn them, vassalize them, and uh, once we sold back their promise here, we're going to have one Spain with the goal of taking these two, these two. And potentially a couple of other provinces, depending on how everything plays out. The goal by taking these two early, or as soon as possible, is simple. That allows me to annex Morocco and Algiers, and then I can actually focus on Hedyars, Oman, uh, Yemen. Really anything that I uh, that I feel like here. The only problem is that Yemen only has 24 years left to live. Or the, their cores only have that long to live before they end. So I have to declare war and omen before that time, otherwise the cores themselves will simply disappear. But uh, we'll consider this more next time. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And hopefully, I'll see you around next time. Bye!